Welcome back to Citizen Arcane, where we talk about mostly books and off-brand sports. And today we are going to be doing our annual State of Indoor Arena Football. Well, uh, before we do, please do take the time to like, subscribe, and share this in any way that you can. Uh, I have this channel mostly to talk about things that I like to talk about and also try to get some exposure for our products. So please also take the time to click on some of the links below. Now, before we get too deep into it, uh, there have been some pretty significant developments for 2024. And, uh, you know, we'll start with the smaller one, and that is just the IFL had a couple of teams on hiatus, basically the Columbus War Dogs, I think it is, the Columbus War Dogs, they have been going to start for a couple of years now and have been put off and put off uh, for strange reasons. It's the same ownership group that owns the uh, Frisco Fighters. I don't really understand about that too much. And then, of course, there's the North Dakota Bucks, who are dormant for this year. When it comes to these off-brand sports, usually dormant means done, but uh, we'll see. We'll see. The IFL is definitely, uh, at the moment, the premier league. So maybe they have the financing and the leadership to actually do something like that and do it right. But we will see. Of course, the biggest news about 2024 has got to be the return of the Arena Football League, which, uh, you know, hopefully, it's only been four years, so... Uh, it's not like a, a legacy project like the USFL was, where I think basically they bought the rights to the logos and so forth, and they just are rebuilding it completely. Maybe some of the infrastructure is there. It looks like the leadership uh, is, you know, I, I think uh, one of the comments I, I have read about this recently is that it's hopeful, not fraudulent, which is better. So some of these uh, leagues, I'm, I'm sure people that listen to this already are familiar with they are directly scammers and uh, and you know it's unfortunate because there's a lot of talented athletes and coaches and so forth that get involved and then wind up having all of their plans dashed at the last minute which you know major league football they say they're coming back that's an outdoor league but uh, it was so bad it was just a debacle so we'll see anyway that said um I see that there is um, Anthony Rossi, uh, who is, I think, the founder of Force One Marketing, which appears to be, just uh, from looking at it, mostly a marketing company, not like um, Redbird Finance, I think it is, with the XFL, where they're a money company, and they are there to serve the interests of investors. Now, hopefully, uh, from the model, from what I've read on their website, uh, you know, this guy, he uh, it says, says he has a certificate of advanced entrepreneurship and technology from Stanford. You know, Stanford impresses me. So we'll see what that is. And then the uh, CEO is a former player who became a, an attorney. So, you know, maybe, maybe these are people who have, one, a great love of the game, and two, the resources to actually do it right. Now, one thing I did like uh, that I've heard thus far is that this is not going to be the single the single entity model that so many leagues have tried and it just doesn't seem to be working out. Uh, you know, maybe they do have 16 investment groups in place, or like the IFL, they'll allow ownership of multiple franchises with a single investment group. But you know, it would be great if the money was there. Starting with 16 teams is better for me. As a fan, I think there's just more interest there, but it also means 16 potential weak links. And we've seen, how many times have we seen these leagues just don't have the resources to uh, pull a, a bad franchise out of a problem situation and they go away. That said, uh, I'll be talking a lot more about the Arena Football League as time goes on and hopefully this next year that they have to prepare is going to be a uh, you know a, a year well spent so you know we get into we've already mentioned the indoor football league a little bit they look very strong they have teams that I think uh, the arena football league people would love to poach obviously teams that were a part of the arena football league you've got Iowa barnstormers you've got the quad city steam 
uh, wheelers. They were a part of AF1 and AF2. And, you know, again, they're, they're a league that uh, I think is strong enough that they could resist any kind of hostile takeover, but it might be worth it for them to work with this new Arena Football League. They go into 2023 the strongest-looking lead I, league I really like. Uh, the Tulsa Oilers, I think that's going to be a great market for all concerned for a lot of reasons, not just the money, not just the market, but because that is a an area that could really lead to good travel, uh, good travel partners and, you know, strengthening a part of uh, the, the leagues that have really been a problem. Then we get into, you know, the National Arena League, really a problem child that shouldn't be. They have a, at least really four franchises that I think the Arena Football League would love to have. That's the Sharks, the Predators, the Albany Empire, and the Carolina Cobras, all of whom have uh, strong ties. Now, uh, the Columbus Lions, I don't think they were ever a part of any part of the Arena Football League, but they are now with uh, this American Indoor Football Alliance, which I think has some hope. I mean, I like the fact that they have teamed up with the American West uh, Football Conference, which is down to just three teams, the Horsemen, the Skyhawks, and the High Desert Storm. So we'll see how that goes. Uh, I think they're pretty strong. I think the CIF is probably not in, a, in the best place. Uh, they've got this whole weird situation with Wichita. There's uh, the regulators maybe coming back in 2024, but the Wichita team uh, moved over to the America, uh, the American Indoor Football Alliance. And we'll see. But again, I think some, some great markets in the CIF to, I think one of the reasons the Omaha Beef has not made the leap to the Indoor Football League is because of their facilities. If anybody knows about that, please let me know. I have never uh, seen them live, so I really don't know. There are some teams that I really, uh, I really like. Again, many of those have signed for non-league games. Uh, just as an example, um, there are teams like the uh, Gold, and the Bandits, St. Charles, Missouri, I, I should catch a game. I will be able to catch a game if they're playing. I'm based in Atlanta, but I get up to St. Louis fairly often. The uh, Magnolia State Spartans, again, I think Mississippi is one of those places it's never going to get, or at least not in, in the foreseeable future, top four franchise. I mean, and I'm talking about you know, base, Major League Baseball, NFL, NHL, or basketball. But I think that could really be a winner for a lot of people. That said, uh, overall, I think we go into 2023 in a, in a good place. Now for Atlanta here, I think we're stuck with the Empire, which is uh, a women's uh, a women's league uh, that, you know, has its, has its merits. But let me know what you think. Please do put things in the comments and have a great day.